Who has written the best biography on Joseph Smith? The two most prominent authors are Fawn Brody and Richard Bushman. Dr. Newell Bringhurst weighs in on the strengths and weaknesses of both authors. Check out our conversation. Before you do that, I just wanted to mention a couple of comments that I've gotten recently and wanted to share with everyone. So I really appreciate the feedback. Um, Zach said, thanks, Rick. I really enjoy the interviews you do. These stories are fascinating. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that. Shannon said, everyone do yourself a favor. Watch all the Gospel Tangents episode. Every interviewee is top notch. This is turning into a great Mormon history resource of primary source and interpretive material. Thank you, Shannon. Really appreciate that. Becky, love, love, love your podcast. It's so pleasant to listen to, and I don't feel like you have as much angst against the church as some of the other podcasters, podcasters are out there. And that is refreshing. Finally, Timber said, Hello, Rick. I love your podcast. Thank you so much for giving an active LDS perspective to church history and difficult gospel topics. So thank you all. I really appreciate those kind words. Just hopefully you can uh, share uh, on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, wherever you can share that with as many people as possible. We really want to make this a big, uh, important resource for lots of people to learn. And hopefully we're going to have some new exciting changes uh, in the next few months because we want even more people to join us. So please share as much as you can. Now back to our conversation. I understand you've you've written a, a, a book about Fawn Brody. Uh, I under, I understand that um, you know kind of the two big Joseph Smith biographies are Fawn Brody's, which was done back in the fifties, I believe. Forty five, nineteen forty five, it was published. And some people still think that's even better than Richard Bushman's recent Rough Stone Rolling. Um, I, you know, I've heard that there's been a lot of things that have happened since 1945, but there are a lot of people, uh, especially those, I guess, criti more critical to the church, that, that prefer Fawn Brody's treatment o over Richard Bushman. So where do you fit on that? Well, I, I, I tell people if they really want to know uh, Joseph Smith, I recommend those two in Tetum. And for this reason, number one is that uh, uh, Brody... Uh, you know, really uh, was a path-breaking study in trying to uh, attribute reasons or motives to uh, Joseph Smith and uh, his practice of polygamy. And uh, it was controversial because she starts it out by uh, her major premise is that Joseph Smith was a conscious fraud. And when you make that statement at the beginning of the book, that's immediately going to send up red flags all over the place. But when you get into the book itself, you know, she actually is quite empathetic to a lot of Joseph Smith's behavior and actions. And, uh, and, and, and she was able to, uh, I, I, I think, create a, a, a more human figure, I think, in previous biographies, they'd either pictured him as a, as a scoundrel, anti-Mormon books that had written by Smith, or in the case of books written by, you know, faithful Latter-day Saints on uh, Joseph Smith, had been made almost as, a, a, you know, a, a, a Hagee, you know, almost a demagogue, a demigod. And uh, so she, I, I, I think, uh, even though she didn't believe that he was really a prophet of God, she tried to give you a sense of the whole man. And there's a certain, I don't know if you've read No Man Knows My History or not. Uh, but Only there pieces is, about the Solomon Spalding. <laughs> but she actually has some empathy for the man. I mean, believe, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and tries to present a, a, a full... Uh, you know, a, a full portrait of the man. And, uh, but it's clear that she is writing as a non-believer, even though she was, she was still technically in the church, even though she'd lapsed into inactivity uh, by the time she was working on the biography. She wasn't formally excommunicated until after the book came out. She was still a member of record. And so 
uh, and and it was based on you know it, it the the sources she used. I mean the, the critics that uh, that had problems with it said, well, not only is she starting from the premise that Joseph is a conscious fraud, but she uses a, a disproportionate number of anti-Mormon sources, and so that does make it a little bit skewed as far as she doesn't give Joseph Smith enough credit as the religious leader that he was or he purported to be. And that was one of my major criticisms that I, that I saw in the book when I read it. Uh, you know, I, 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 I told you the other qualities I thought were positive, but she, you know, because she's so anxious to prove him as a, as, as less than honest and, and she tends to downplay his, uh, you know, his, his role as a religious leader and, and somewhat discounts his sincerity. Although she concedes that he probably ended up convincing himself that he was indeed, you know, taking on the persona of a religious leader. I, I, I tend to be more of a, of a, of a person that sees Joseph Smith, perhaps not starting out with the intention of, of, of founding a religion, I mean, and founding a new religious tradition. Uh, uh, I mean, there was a very convincing paper presented at Sunstone uh, by, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the name of the scholar, uh, quite, a, quite a respected scholar. Oh yeah, Christopher Smith. Christopher Smith, who just graduated from uh, the Claremont uh, Graduate School of Theology comes out. He's a non-Mormon, but he he did a paper arguing uh, that Joseph Smith uh, initially didn't intend to found a new religion, but it was kind of convinced by Oliver Cowdery. Kind of kind of a controversial uh, uh, thesis. I thought it was one of the more interesting, evocative presentations at the Sunstone Symposium, and so he's kind of taking a little bit on the Brody argument. That uh, bro that uh, he grew or evolved into a religious leader, and and con you know uh, uh, convinced himself that he could uh, you know lead this movement and have these people following him. Uh, uh, so she discon you know discounts completely the whole supernatural uh, aspects, whereas Bushman is coming at it as a true believer, but he still gives. Uh, He's still willing to say, well, these are the arguments on the other side. He's willing to, you know, restate Brody's arguments sort of for the purpose of, of discounting them. You know, he, he, he say there's these other arguments out here. But uh, uh, when you compare Bushman's with Brody's, his is based on a lot more, uh, you know, uh, contemporary documents. Uh, he had access to a lot of materials and documents that Brody didn't have access to. So his is a much more thoroughly... Uh, researched and and uh, uh, documented history, but I don't think it is as as engagingly written. Vaughn Brody was trained in uh, English uh, literature and uh, received her degree in English, and so she brought that expertise and is able to write, you know, in a very engaging way. It, 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 to me, it's a it's a much more readable biography, but uh, Bushman's is uh, a more carefully documented and uh, gives you all sides of the argument. And he's arguing uh, also from the vantage point that, that uh, uh, of a faithful uh, practicing Latter-day Saint, that he believes that he was what he said he was, a prophet of God, and pretty much, you know, takes, uh, you know, goes along with, uh, you know, uh, the various, uh, the, the divine origin of the various doctrines and practices. It's far from being a hagiography because Bushman does acknowledge his faults and his shortcomings and, uh, you know, the, the mistakes that he made and so on. So it's good in that regard. And so uh, that's why I, when I, when people ask me, uh, you know, what do I recommend? I always recommend those two in, in Tetum. I think to really understand Joseph Smith, you have to, you know, read both of them. So I still think Brody's biography is valid even after all of the years that it's been in, 
in, in, in uh, publication. I think she had a lot of perceptive insights into Joseph Smith and how his evolution as a religious figure. Hmm. Uh, I, I know that Hugh Hugh Nibley wrote a book. Uh, yeah, a no pamphlet. Man, that's not history. It, it's not really a book. It's a it's a very uh, thin, superficial pamphlet. That even according to the sources I've talked to, that eventually he even admitted that he had done a less than adequate job in critiquing No Man Knows My History. And I, I believe this even comes from Boyd Peterson, who was his biographer, you know, who wrote the, oh. the definitive, and, and he'd be an interesting person for you to interview Boyd Peterson, uh, interesting guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he, you know, I, he acknowledges that uh, Nibley came to somehow, you know, regret that he'd done that. <laughs> he said, I was a foolish young man. He was just starting out as a professor, kind of a, you know, uh, you start out young, you, you're, you're going to be a little bit aggressive and, and want to show the world who you are. And I think, I think that was where Nibley was when he, when he was asked to write that. <laughs> so I know uh, Fawn Brody, in addition to writing No Man Knows My History, he, uh, she also did a Thomas Jefferson uh, biography. And it, it, I know that there have been some people that said, well, she's kind of doing psychobiography. This isn't really... Legitimate, and so a lot of people complain about her Jefferson biography, uh, to which the Mormons were saying, "Yes, that's what we were, <laughs> we were arguing about." Um, can can you weigh in on that? Well, I I I, I think that there were psychological elements in, in in the Joseph Smith biography, but it was less psychobiographical than the Thomas Jefferson. You can see a, a trajectory as she moved along through her career. Her biographies became increasingly psychobiographical. Uh, Joseph Smith is the least so. Her last biography was a biography on Richard Nixon. It's the very most, and she's really putting Nixon on the couch. And, and that biography was poorly received by critics and by people in general. It's probably the weakest of her five biographies. And uh, Thomas Jefferson, was the one she completed just before that and and there are strong elements of psychobiography in that but the strength of the thomas jefferson biography was her uh, analysis of the relationship that uh, jefferson had with his black slave mistress sally hemmings she was the first one to really thoroughly and and comprehensively develop the idea that uh, Thomas Jefferson did indeed father mulatto children, uh, several mulatto children, through his relationship with Sally Hemings. And at the time, she was roundly criticizing for being a scandal monger, the people in the Jefferson establishment. Because uh, she wasn't a Jefferson scholar. She was coming at it as a, you know, as, as, as just a biographer, as a psychobiographer. And, and so these people that had been working for years on uh, Thomas Jefferson, people like Merle uh, Peterson, uh, the late Dumas Malone, who wrote a, a, a multi-volume biography on Thomas Jefferson, saw her as, a, 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 as, as an interloper and a scandal monger. They didn't like her. I mean, any more than the Mormons <laughs> had problems with her as a biographer on, on, on as Thomas Jefferson or on uh, uh, Joseph Smith. I mean, they say, there she goes again, you know, sir. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I think the strength of her Thomas Jefferson biography was in establishing pretty definitively that uh, uh, Jefferson was involved sexually with Sally Hemings. And it did help the DNA evidence. And then, then the DNA evidence, of course, vindicated her, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Newell Bringhurst. In our next conversation, we'll tackle the other controversial topic, polygamy. Dr. Newell Bringhurst has written, recently written an anthology on polygamy, and we'll hear more about his insights into some of the authors that helped him with this book, as well as his approach to difficult and controversial topics in Mormonism. Uh, Don Bradley did an essay on Fanny Alger, arguing that uh, Joseph's marriage to uh, Fanny Alger was a actually a marriage and not a not an affair, not a nasty little affair as all, as Oliver Cowdery said. While I tend to take issue with him, I, I I allowed him to make his case, and I 
you know, and he gave he gave a good argument for his position, and so I, you know, I I felt like it it should be out there for people to uh, consider it. I've always considered myself to be fair-minded when I look at controversial issues. I want to make sure that people are aware of all sides of, of, of an issue. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you like our page on facebook.com slash gospel tangents. You can subscribe at YouTube at youtube.com slash gospel tangents. We're also on Twitter at gospel tangents as well as make sure that you subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss any of our episodes. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our videos. Thanks again.